Welcome back to the channel guys and today I will be exploring the fictional character of Karl Rupert Cronin. Now this is a character which has appeared both in the comics as well as the movies of Hellboy. However there is a big difference between the two. In the comics Cronin was in fact a German scientist working for the Nazis rather than an undead assassin. He was also a member of the Fuel Society and Dr. Cronin became one of the top scientists for Project Ragnarok and of course a close disciple of Grigory Rasputin. Similar to the movies, he was present with Rasputin at the secret ritual in Scotland which brought Hellboy into the world. Cronin would then be frozen inside a secret Nazi base until he was then resuscitated by Roderick Zinko, an industrialist that was acting on Rasputin's orders. Cronin would then resume work on several of his former projects including making an apocalypse army which interestingly enough in the comics is very similar to how Cronin is displayed in the movies. This apocalypse army would be built by combining corpses with a form of robotics which if you compare Cronin in the movies he is a form of clockwork undead assassin. Now in terms of Cronin's comic appearance there are some other bits and pieces similar to the Hellboy movies with respect to Cronin working for Rasputin and helping him waken the Ogdru Jihad but again it is very very different to the movies. In the movies Karl Rupert Cronin was born in Munich, Germany in 1897. As a child Cronin was renowned as a musical prodigy with an angelic voice. His talent for opera quickly securing him a tour of all of the capitals of Europe. Eventually however much like most young talent the onset of puberty ruined his voice and then ended his operatic career. Consumed then with self-loathing at the awkwardness of his body he took to whipping himself with an oak branch and then his pain quickly turned to pleasure and he became a sadomasochist. He began to love to mutilate his body. He became a obsessed with body perfection and from there to a surgical addiction. Over the course of his self-surgery he removed his nails, his lips and even his eyelids. As a result he also took to wearing a custom made mask to filter out bacteria and other elements that might damage his freshly exposed tissues. Once he had recovered he made a name for himself as a talented craftsman and an engineer particularly skilled in the creation of clockwork mechanisms. An early success to his name was a nightingale capable of reproducing one of Mozart's arias. Now in terms of how that worked into the movies again you can see he became a clockwork craftsman and eventually put that inside himself. However again his self mutilation obsession would overshadow his ability to create fine clockwork mechanisms. He believed that the fusion of clockwork and flesh would be the means by which he could attain perfection and indeed purity. 33 years later in 1930 he met Grigory Rasputin and soon became his most loyal follower. Soon after he joined the Nazi party and from there the SS. Ascending swiftly to the rank of Obersturmbannführer he earned the Iron Cross for bravery and impressed the Nazi elite with his many administrative successes and he also had a period of stewardship over in Auschwitz concentration camp. Eventually Cronin would join the Fuel Society which is an elite society of German aristocrats obsessed with the occult and again followed Rasputin. His successes were no less auspicious and by the 1940s he was the head of the society. Here he could serve Rasputin more directly while also making a name for himself as Hitler's top assassin. Eliminating all of the troublesome individuals both inside and outside of the party. Under Rasputin's instructions he used the resources of the society to initiate Project Ragnarok engineering the machinery that would conjure the portal to the Ogdru Jihad. He also accompanied Rasputin and the troops to the remote island where the summoning would take place, assisting in the activation and defending the area from allied troops. Though he did kill a great many of them over the course of the battle, Trevor Broom Brutenholm was able to throw a grenade under the portal and Cronin's attempt to retrieve it only resulted in him getting his hand blown off. Impaled through the heart by a length of rebar from the exploding machinery and it was then believed that he had died. However his body inexplicably vanished soon afterwards though the biography reports that a corpse matching his dental records was eventually found in Romania. 
But then, of course, we know that he did not die. And 74 years later, in 2004, Cronin reappeared and joined Lisa Halpstein in resurrecting Rasputin once more. After helping to unleash Samael on the subways, he also took part in a scheme to eliminate the BPRD's leadership and lure Hellboy to Rasputin's side. Now, of course, this is what we saw in the Hellboy movie. He pretended to be dead. However, he then returned to life, and after a brief confrontation with Professor Broom and Rasputin, Cronin stabbed Broom through the throat, killing him instantly. Shortly afterward, we see that Hellboy followed the clues to Rasputin's mausoleum in Moscow, and this is where he was presumed dead. However, in an animated feature included on the Hellboy 2 DVD, Cronin's head was recovered from the site by Roderick Zinko and brought to a Project Ragnarok base in Antarctica. This is where he was then attached to a gigantic robotic exoskeleton, and it was essentially his brand new body. And it is thought that Cronin would have appeared in Hellboy 3 if that film had been made. And there you have it, that is a brief exploration of Cronin, the inhuman assassin. What do you think about this? Did you like the way they completely changed Cronin's character from the comics to the movies? Let me know down below in the comments section. As always, if you are new here, please do hit that subscribe button. Stay up to date on all the world of pop culture and movie news. As always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.